What? There's no interpreter. No way. Lily seemed so shocked that she raised her voice. She quickly lowered it, but it was clear she was flustered. They were supposed to provide the interpreter, but they didn't bring one. Was it those two who caused this? They're probably using the lack of an interpreter as an excuse to cancel the deal. If you're in a pinch, I can do the interpreting. I speak English just fine. Before I knew it, I had said that out loud. I'm Ryan, 31 years old. I work as a taxi driver. I also have the background of a mathematician who graduated top of my class from Harvard. Or rather, I used to have that background. Now, I just enjoy my time driving solo through the streets of Tokyo. I distanced myself from the beauty of mathematics and its precise logic, and now, I listen to all sorts of people's stories in my car. That's what my life has become. The soft light of the evening reflects off the windows of the buildings, casting a pale golden hue over the busy cityscape. Amidst the hustle and bustle of this city, the taxi remains a quiet space. Good evening, Ryan. We meet again today. The door opened, and my regular, Lily Bennett, got in. She's a young CEO of a startup and takes my taxi almost daily. I always look forward to hearing about her day whenever she steps into my cab. Good evening, Lily. You worked hard again today. I'm really exhausted. Sounds like work's been tough. Lily leaned back deeply into the seat. She's tall, with wavy brown hair, and has sharp eyes that give her a stern look. At first, she seemed a bit intimidating, but lately, she's been showing a more relaxed side. Work is tough, but... I also get invited to dinner by clients quite often. Well, you're a beautiful woman, Lily. Don't tease me. It's exhausting turning them down every time. I glanced at her in the rearview mirror, she looked completely worn out. Realizing that teasing her any further wouldn't be wise, I chuckled and turned on the audio system. Soft jazz melodies began to fill the car, bringing a sense of calm to the atmosphere. I'll play some relaxing music for you tonight. Yeah, thanks. She sighed deeply, leaning into the seat. I hoped the soothing jazz could ease her fatigue even if just a little. For a while, she listened to the music in silence. Then, as if a thought suddenly crossed her mind, she spoke up. Come to think of it, Ryan, it's rare for someone young like you to be a taxi driver. Her voice had a hint of curiosity that was slightly different from usual. It's true that most taxi drivers are on the older side. Why did you decide to become a taxi driver? because I love cars. And maybe, to see you, Lily. You're such a smooth talker. She chuckled, thinking I was joking. Deep down, there was another reason hidden within me. A past I didn't want to remember quietly crossed my mind. Ha! I'm really tired. Lily let out a cute yawn. I'm going to take a nap. Can you wake me up when we get to my place? Got it. I gave my agreement, but she was already fast asleep. I couldn't help but smile at her lack of caution, but she must have been really exhausted. Unlike me, who ran away, she's probably fighting all sorts of battles. With her soft breathing mixed with the jazz, the taxi melted into the night once again. Amidst the quiet inside the car, a distant memory suddenly surfaced. My days at Harvard came back to me in vivid detail. Immersing myself in the world of mathematics, spending countless nights solving problems. Under the artificial lights, drifting in a sea of equations, passionately searching for new theories. The success of my research gave me a solid sense of confidence, and one day, I submitted a paper that could change the world. However, the paper was rejected. The reason was obvious. It must have been George. 
George, with his powerful sponsors, used his influence to sabotage me. I never imagined that my sincere passion for mathematics could be defeated by such underhanded tactics. Back then, I couldn't believe it and went to protest to Professor Cooper. Why was my paper rejected? The content should be correct. My voice trembled, disbelief seeping into my words. Ryan. Sometimes, in academia, being right isn't enough. Professor Cooper sighed deeply and looked at me with sorrowful eyes. In those eyes, I saw a resignation to an unavoidable reality. That's. Then, why did I fall in love with mathematics? My voice grew increasingly rough. I was overwhelmed by a sense of anger and disappointment that I couldn't suppress. Ryan, I understand your passion. But reality is harsh. Professor Cooper spoke slowly, as if explaining to a child. George has powerful sponsors behind him. We can't ignore their wishes. His words were calm, but that calmness only fueled my frustration. Is that what the academic world is about? Power and money taking precedence over what's right. My shoulders shook, filled with frustration. Ryan. You still have a path ahead of you. I want you to keep looking forward, not give up. His words felt like a consolation, yet also an irrefutable verdict. And so, having been made painfully aware of my powerlessness, I left the institute. George's sneering as he watched me, the loser, still lingers in my ears. Your passion is useless. His mocking eyes, his cold voice, it all seemed to engulf me. My spirit broken, I gave up fighting and returned to Japan. My former passion had faded, and I chose a quiet life. Now, I spend my days listening to people's stories and finding solace in the passing scenery outside the car window. In the quiet of the car, I hummed softly along with the jazz music. As I waited at a red light, I glanced at her peaceful sleeping face. The taxi glided smoothly, and before long, we arrived at Lily's home. A luxurious high-rise condo towered before us. Its dazzling exterior was like stepping into another world. Lily, we're here. Lily, who had been quietly sleeping, woke up at the sound of my voice. She gradually came to her senses from her groggy state, looked around for a moment, then smiled. Oh. Thank you, Ryan. I slept so well. Glad to hear that. You seemed especially tired today. Yeah. I have a big deal coming up. The pressure is intense. Lily let out a small yawn and unbuckled her seatbelt. As she opened the taxi door, she stretched like a little kitten. The lights from the high-rise condo illuminated her making her look like a scene from a movie. I was about to drive off, but Lily turned back around. Ryan, thanks again for today. I didn't do anything. That's not true. You're my support. Ha, that's a bit of an exaggeration. No, it's not. She put her hands on her hips like a teacher explaining something. Even when things get tough, I think about talking to you, and it helps me hold back. I see. Well, venting to me is probably good for both of us. Is it really good for you too? I'm the only one who feels better afterward. I feel better seeing you smile. I usually have passengers with serious faces. Ha, huh, in that case, it's definitely a win-win. She traced her finger along the taxi door with a slightly mischievous smile. Want to come up for a bit? Just for a little while. I got my hands on some really good tea leaves. I was momentarily taken aback by her playful invitation. Her charming smile blended with the quietness of the night. For a second, something inside me wavered, but I quickly regained my composure. Thanks, but I still have work. 
Maybe next time, if there's a chance. That's too bad. But, see you later. She waved lightly and headed toward the entrance of the condo. I watched from inside the car as the luxurious lobby lights enveloped her and her figure slowly disappeared into the distance. Lily was bathed in the dazzling lights, a stark contrast to the stillness left behind when the jazz music stopped. We quite literally live in different worlds. It's not about income, of course. That luxurious life of hers is the result of her facing challenges head-on, without running away. I, who had simply tucked my tail and fled, even hesitated to show her my smile. With Lily's warmth fading away, the silence settled in once again. I took a deep breath and moved the taxi to pick up the next passenger. The city remained as noisy as ever, but my own story was still at a standstill. Without much purpose, I continued to drive the taxi. The next afternoon, the taxi was back in the midst of the hustle and bustle. Through the window, I saw people briskly going about their daily routines. I circled the outskirts of the busy world when suddenly, a passenger hailed me. While waiting at a red light, two men flagged down the taxi and got in. One was tall, and the other was thin. Both of them looked like they were from overseas. They were dressed in business suits and seemed to be in a hurry. Where to? To MW Corporation. Hurry up. We're in a rush. Understood. I'll get there as quickly as I can. Annoyed by their rudeness, I responded calmly. As I started the engine and drove off, they began talking to each other. Their voices were annoyingly loud so I couldn't help but overhear their conversation. They were speaking in English, probably thinking I didn't understand them. What are we going to do about the deal with MW Corporation? Oomph, that lady CEO's company, huh? Well, if we cause a little disruption, the deal will be off. I see. So that's how we'll get some pocket money? Exactly. It's an easy job. But what is he thinking, wanting to see the business expansion in Japan fail? Apparently, one of his old rivals might be in Japan. A rival? Yeah. So our boss is worried that if he moves into Japan seriously, he might draw the attention of that rival. He wants to keep the sponsorship deals to himself, huh? What a small-minded guy. They shrugged their shoulders exaggeratedly and laughed. But to me, it wasn't a laughing matter. I had a bad feeling after hearing their conversation. MW Corporation is Lily's company. If that's the case, then the big deal Lily mentioned is likely their target. I bet they're scrambling over there, clueless. It's almost comical to watch. Absolutely. Teaching that young woman the harshness of business will be quite entertaining. Anger welled up inside me, but I held it back. Saying anything now would be pointless. We're here. Took you long enough? What a slowpoke. Our time is expensive, you know? When we arrived at MW Corporation, the two men got out, complaining the whole time. I kept a plastered smile on my face as I saw them off. As they disappeared from view, I received a message on my phone. It was from Lily, asking for a ride due to the upcoming deal. Sorry for the sudden call. No worries. Thank you for choosing me. Responding to her request, I quickly went to pick her up. Lily got into the taxi, looking exhausted. Where to? To the office, please. I have an important deal. I see. So, the deal is happening today after all. The concern that those two men might cause trouble for Lily still loomed. However, there was also a chance it was unrelated. I couldn't just tell her what I'd overheard, so I decided to bring it up subtly. By the way, 
How's the preparation for the deal going? The deal? Everything should be ready. Lily looked out the window of the moving car. After a moment of thought, she began making a phone call. It's an important deal, so it can't hurt to double check, right? That's true. Better safe than sorry. If there was no issue, that would be the best outcome. But my hopeful assumption was quickly shattered. What? There's no interpreter. No way. Lily seemed so shocked that she raised her voice. She quickly lowered it, but it was clear she was flustered. They were supposed to provide the interpreter, but they didn't bring one. Was this the work of those two men? What? They're claiming it was our communication error. How could this happen? Those two probably spoke Japanese as well. Using the lack of an interpreter as an excuse to cancel the deal, huh? If you're in trouble, I can interpret for you. I speak English fluently. Before I knew it, those words had already left my mouth. What, really? You, Ryan? But, don't worry about my English skills. I have a lot of foreign passengers. In that case, could you? It would be such a help. Leave it to me. Lily let out a sigh of relief. She must have been quite anxious. I had casually offered my help, but it was too late to regret it now. More than that, seeing Lily so relieved, there was no way I could back out. After arriving at the company, I parked the taxi in the lot and followed her inside. Usually, I just drop her off, so walking with her felt refreshingly new. She looked tense, but there was a hint of relief on her face compared to before. Don't worry, Lily. I'll support you with everything I've got. Thank you, Ryan. You're really a lifesaver. I had already skimmed through the documents for the meeting earlier. When we entered the MW Corporation conference room, the two men from the taxi were already seated in waiting. The tall man and the thin man gave us a look of disdain as soon as they saw us. So, you're the interpreter? Yes. I look forward to working with you today. Oomph, a taxi driver as an interpreter? That's amusing. They sneered, but I remained calm. With just a brief introduction, the meeting began. Pleased to meet you. Likewise, Missy. Lily could speak English to some extent, but she wasn't fluent. In an ordinary business meeting, it might have been enough, but not this time. I would have to step in and handle this. We believe the proposal is necessary for market expansion. However, we need to verify some conditions. Given the current financial situation, we need to be more cautious about the investment. And we need a guarantee that MW Corporation can meet these demands without compromising quality. Ah, uh, um. They were speaking quickly on purpose, mixing in confusing jargon. They even started speaking almost simultaneously, clearly trying to create confusion. They want to confirm the terms necessary for market expansion and verify the conditions. I didn't miss a word, translating everything for Lily immediately. They specifically need assurance that the demands can be met without compromising quality, considering the current financial situation. I see. We have already taken measures for that. Let's present the specific numbers and plans. I translated Lily's words into English and handed over the documents to the men. The tall man and the thin man looked slightly surprised. However, they quickly resumed their attempts to cause trouble. What about the potential risks of the new technology? We have serious concerns about compatibility and potential downtime. Don't forget the legal implications. There are hurdles to clear and significant delays could occur. 
As they began speaking over each other again, I listened calmly. But as they kept piling on, I realized translating everything as they spoke would be impossible. We've compiled our approach to the potential risks and legal issues in this document. I handed them the document she had already prepared. Then, in a low voice, I said to them, If you're here to sabotage this deal, then speaking to you sincerely is meaningless. Ha! Huh? What are you talking about? How rude! Doing business with someone who says things like that. If you're here to cause trouble, would you like me to call your boss? Wah! It seems I need to explain everything about you to him. Ah, uh, well. The two of them went pale, exchanging nervous glances. From what I overheard, they were being paid to sabotage the deal. To their boss, this would be a serious betrayal. If they were lucky, they'd only get fired. And it was likely that their misconduct didn't end with just this incident. Of course, I didn't know the full extent of their actions, but they didn't know what I did or didn't know. They would surely misunderstand, thinking I knew more than I actually did, and that fear would work in my favor. Very well, your involvement is sufficient. Let's proceed with the partnership under the agreed conditions. Indeed. We look forward to a cooperative relationship. In a panic, they quickly changed their attitude and suddenly accepted the contract. Lily had been watching our exchange with a puzzled expression. When she realized the contract had been secured, her face lit up with a radiant smile. So, the deal is done? Yes, it's done. Thank you so much, Ryan. This negotiation was a success thanks to you. I simply smiled. A sense of satisfaction from battling in the business world, a feeling I had long forgotten, swelled in my chest. As the meeting ended, the two men left, but not before making a bitter remark. Honestly, your interpreting was impressive. Yeah, handling that situation so skillfully. Why were you pretending to be a taxi driver? Thank you. But I'm not pretending. I bowed to them politely. In any case, the success of this negotiation was a significant step forward for Lily. After the two men left the company, she repeatedly expressed her gratitude. Ryan, thank you so much. I don't know what would have happened if you hadn't been there. No, it was your preparation and skill that made this a success. I just helped out a bit. That's not true. Can I rely on you again in the future? As long as it's within my capabilities. Isn't there anything you can't do? Lily said this with a smile full of trust. Seeing that smile, I awkwardly smiled back. As we drove toward her home, she suddenly made a suggestion. How about we take a little drive? It feels like a waste to just go straight home. Should I stop the meter? No need. This is my little indulgence. That's generous of you. Anywhere in particular you'd like to go? Not really. I just want to talk for a bit. I nodded and smoothly drove through the night city. For a while, we were both silent, simply taking in the city lights, until Lily finally spoke. Ryan, what's in the depths of your heart? For a moment, her question left me speechless. That's. I was about to deflect as usual, but then I met her earnest gaze. In the rearview mirror, she was looking at me, trying to understand and believe in me. I didn't want to say anything pointless and end up being looked down upon. It's not a very interesting story, but is that okay? I'd love to hear it. She smiled, looking relieved. After taking a few seconds to steal myself, I began to speak slowly. Believe it or not, I graduated at the top of my class from Harvard as a mathematician. Really? You were that incredible. 
But the paper that I poured my life into was sabotaged by my rival, George. Even now, thinking back to that time was painful. My spirit was broken, and I lost the motivation to continue my research. That's terrible. I had no idea you had such a past. Since then, I've distanced myself from the world of research, and now I'm a taxi driver. Ryan. Ha ha. But, you know, I wouldn't have met you if I weren't a taxi driver. Lily remained silent for a while but eventually spoke with a resolute voice. Ryan, this George. Is he the mathematician coming to Japan soon? I'm not really up on the news, but it wouldn't be surprising if he did. I see. The parent company of the one we dealt with today is one of George's sponsors. Then it seems almost certain. But honestly, it doesn't bother me anymore. But I'm having fun driving. Just go ahead and do business with George's sponsor without worrying. Ryan. It wouldn't make sense for the deal to fall through on my account, especially after such a big success. Her battles are still ongoing. Worrying about my fight, which had already ended, would be pointless. I can't forgive him for what he did to you. I want to see you use your talent again. Just hearing you say that means a lot to me. If I made any move, George would surely take action. That could end up causing trouble for the institute where I once worked. I couldn't see the point of taking such a risk just to return. Thank you, Lily. Just knowing there's someone who wants me to come back is enough to make me happy. Don't say something so sad. The taxi continued to drive silently through the night, carrying the hollow sound of nothingness. Even after dropping her off at her home, I couldn't manage a proper conversation with her. And, after that day, Lily stopped using my taxi. I missed her absence, but I eventually got used to it. That day, too, was just part of the usual routine, and I went about my work as usual. Attention to the taxis on standby at the station. There's a passenger waiting in front of the city hotel. I was about to go looking for a fare when the message came over the radio. Following the instructions, I headed straight to the city hotel. When I arrived, two men in suits approached the taxi. One was an older man, and the other was a blonde man wearing a hat. To the station, please. Understood. I let them in and started driving. A few minutes of silence passed before the blonde man suddenly removed his hat. You? You look familiar. At the sound of that voice, my heart nearly stopped for a moment. I glanced at the rearview mirror, and indeed, it was a face I recognized. George. George's eyes widened in shock as he recognized me as well. Ryan. What are you doing here? You know each other? George replied with a cynical smirk. Yeah, an old colleague. A man who ran away from the world of mathematics. I kept my composure, but inside, I was fighting a wave of irritation. Whose fault do you think that was? Oh, right. Yeah, you lost to me. I didn't lose. Mathematics lost to money. You think you're the guardian of the mathematical world? How arrogant. There's more hope in that than in your delusion of still being a true mathematician. What did you say? George clicked his tongue in annoyance. I continue to research even while appearing on TV. But what about you? What are you doing now? In this taxi, I'm always solving math problems in my mind. I might even crack an unsolved problem. Ha! That's just sour grapes. Is that so? It's actually a rather quiet and conducive environment. George sneered, but the older man seemed intrigued. So, you both are mathematicians, I see. 
Spencer, Ryan can hardly be called a mathematician anymore. Why the rush, George? Just a little curiosity, that's all. I'm not rushing. George muttered, looking out the window with discontent. Spencer. If memory serves, he was George's sponsor. By the way, what's your favorite number? The sudden question took both of us by surprise. George was quick to answer. 407. It's a three-digit narcissistic number, absolutely beautiful. Interesting. And it's also my birthday, April 7th. A number destined for me. Ah, uh, I see. Spencer pondered this for a moment. And you, Ryan? Let's see. I thought for a moment before responding lightly. The number on this taxi's license plate is my favorite. George scoffed at my answer. What a boring answer. To love the random numbers on a license plate. However, Spencer smiled. 1729, if I recall correctly. It's famous as the Hardy Ramanujan number, the taxi cab number. What? As expected of a worldly successful man. You notice even the smallest details. Ha ha. I admire your sense and the foresight to set things up beforehand. George's face stiffened as if sensing something was off. George, I'm afraid I'll have to withdraw my sponsorship. Your answer lacks a certain flair. W8. You're joking, right? If you think it's a joke, then you lack the sense to laugh. No, well, ha. Huh? Don't make me repeat myself. This is goodbye. Ugh. I pulled the taxi over to the side of the road and opened George's door. He looked like he had more to say, but eventually, he gave up and got out of the car. He knew better than to anger someone as influential as Spencer. Well then, enjoy your time in Japan, I said. Ugh. George wore a mixture of shock and anger on his face, but he left without another word. As I started the car again, Spencer gave a quiet smile. Ryan, I'd like to have a word with you. What is it? I've decided to partner with MW Corporation, and President Bennett strongly advocated for you. What? Lily, for me. Spencer nodded and continued. She believed in both your talent and your character. For a moment, I was at a loss for words. I hadn't realized Lily had been working so hard on my behalf. Lily is a remarkable person. I'm confident that her judgment is sound. Yes. She truly is an amazing person. And I understand you now, Ryan. I believe you will be a valuable asset to our project. My heart swelled with gratitude. Honestly, I'm surprised. But if Lily has that much faith in me, I want to live up to her trust. Spencer nodded, looking satisfied. Then let's arrange a formal meeting soon, with Lily included. I look forward to it. The taxi continued to glide quietly toward its destination. Inside me, a mix of anticipation and anxiety for this new challenge swirled. I felt like my story was beginning to move forward again as I took this new step. Where shall I take you? To my place, please. Driving through the night city, I could feel a sense of renewal. Ryan, thank you so much. Thanks to you, the project is moving along smoothly. Not at all. You're the one who convinced Spencer to come on board with your skill. Without your knowledge and insight, we wouldn't have made it this far. That's a fact. Ha ha. Thank you. Through the rearview mirror, I caught her gentle gaze. But you are quite the gentleman. Quitting as a taxi driver to become my personal chauffeur. The pay is better this way. Ryan, you don't have to worry about the driving. 
you can focus on mathematics. Thank you, Lily. It means a lot to hear you say that. I suddenly thought of something and decided to ask her. By the way, what happened to George recently? He lost his backing and his status and reputation have been crumbling. People have realized he lacks real ability. I see. If he had sincerely continued his research, things might have turned out differently. The fact that he had to sabotage you showed his true colors from the start. After that, Lily fell silent, gazing out at the night scenery. Eventually, we arrived at her high-rise, and she spoke up suddenly. Ryan, I have something to talk about. Will you come up? All right. Following her lead, I stepped into the elevator and entered her apartment. From the spacious living room, the night view stretched out before us in all its splendor. Lily, looking a bit nervous, motioned for me to sit on the sofa. Ryan, there's actually something I'd like to ask of you. What is it? Would you go to America with me? America? Yes. There's a project we're working on in collaboration with a research institute over there. I really need your help. For a moment, I was taken aback, but then I smiled. If it's something you need, I'd be more than happy to help. Really? Thank you, Ryan. I'm your driver, after all. You're being mean. She blushed, speaking in a slightly sulky tone. Not as a driver, and not just as a mathematician. What I need is you, just you.